Welcome to the Arlington Street Church podcast. Founded in 1729, Arlington Street continues today as a gathering place for progressive people of faith in the greater Boston area and beyond. We are located at the corner of Arlington and Boylston Streets, across from the Public Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Please visit ASCBoston.org for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace. 25 years ago, Leanne Nichols and Shannon Lowney were working at the preterm and Planned Parenthood clinics in Brookline. On the morning of December 30th, 1994, an anti-abortionist walked in and shot them to death. After the memorial service and the subsequent Roe v. Wade rally were conducted here at Arlington Street, the church and I became targets of bomb threats and death threats. Our youngest daughters were five and six at the time. A police car was parked outside their elementary school. A police detail covered the church, and a small army of bodyguards was assigned to me. I was wild with grief and much too angry to be afraid. I hardly noticed them. But every day for months, day and night, they put their lives on the line for us. All but two of them remained intentionally anonymous. One became a regular here until his death, Another still visits on occasion, both devout, practicing Catholics who grew very fond of this beloved spiritual community while protecting us. You can say they were doing their jobs, but most of us don't risk our lives on a daily basis, prepared to take a bullet for someone else. I have often wished I knew whom to thank. Sometimes, if we're very, very lucky, we get the chance for a do-over. One morning in 2008, a truck was pouring cement out in front of the church and the alley was completely blocked. An officer was on traffic detail. I rolled down the window and we had a good-natured conversation in which he agreed to let me drive my Jeep up and over the sidewalk so I could get inside for a meeting. After I'd parked, he approached me and introduced himself. Extending his hand, he said he actually felt like he knew me quite well because 14 years earlier, he'd been working as a detective and had been assigned, as he said it, to chase after you and those two pretty little girls. How old are they now? You working me to the bone running all over this city. (laughs) And suddenly, finally, I was inside the bear hug of this huge man telling him how much I admired his bravery. It was nothing, he said. You all were doing the right thing. Everybody was just trying to make it better after all that evil. And then I was able to look into his beautiful face and thank him, finally thank him for having my back, our backs, in those very difficult days. This is the directive I'm taking into this new year. Don't miss it. And if you miss it, fix it. (laughs) A woman I don't know told this story. This morning, one of my regular customers, a really grumpy elderly man who has been eating in our diner every morning for the better part of five years, left me $1,000 in cash for his $7 breakfast. Alongside the cash, he left a small note that read, Thank you, Christine. I know I haven't been the brightest light in your life, but your smile and generally hospitable service has sincerely given me something to look forward to every morning since my wife passed away. 
This afternoon, I'm moving eight hours down the road to live with my son and his family. May the rest of your life be magical. Don't miss it. And if you miss it, fix it. As you know, spiritual teacher Ram Das died on December 22nd. This is one of my favorite stories he told. Um, a woman had started an outreach program with animals, and I'm sorry I don't know her name, but these are her words. In one psychiatric hospital, we went to a group known as the boys. The boys can be aged 18 to 48 with a mental capacity from infant to two or three years. I had a ferret. One boy came running, yelling, touch, touch, touch. I said, you can touch him later. But when we got around to it, the feeling had left him. I just wanted to die. Tears streamed down my face. I'd missed it. Oh, did I miss it. But I've never missed it again. In a cancer ward, a man refused to come out of his room. He was bitter and angry. He heard there were animals. He was just a little curious. So this time, right away, I said, would you like to touch? Oh, sure, sure, he said sarcastically. With these hands, he thrust them in my face. There were no fingers left. Then he just looked down at the floor. I felt terrible, but I said, here then, with your palms. And he began to let us help. With each animal, he became a little softer. For once, there was something beside his illness. He began to cry. This is so beautiful, he said. I will never forget this. I love this woman's awakening. I'd missed it. Oh, did I miss it, but I've never missed it again. It's a fierce lens to look through. I missed it. And no one makes it to adulthood without missing it. Many, perhaps most of us, don't make it through a day without missing it. And we may not get a do-over, may not be able to back up, take it back, make it right in the past, but every moment proffers us the chance not to miss it in the present. Ram Dass said, be here now. And if you miss it, fix it. <clears throat> My friend Jimmy was devoted to his mother until slowly, inexorably, he became enslaved to alcohol and there were days he didn't remember he had a mother. In one clear moment, he bought her a Mother's Day card and tossed it onto the passenger seat of his car. In occasional moments when he wasn't driving drunk, he would notice the card and think he really should send it. Mother's Day came and went and it remained unsent. And then one day, his sister called to say that their mother had died peacefully in her sleep, though she had been asking for him just the afternoon before, as she always had. Jimmy walked into his first meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous, unsent card in hand. He got sober and put the card next to a framed photo of his mother on top of his dresser. Now, many, many years later, his AA chips are scattered around the card and the photo, and all the service he gives to others who are suffering with alcoholism is done in her name. Someone else told me that his grandfather in the final decade of his life woke up every single day at seven o'clock picked a fresh wildflower on his morning walk and took it to his grandmother's grave. One morning he went with him and as his grandfather placed the flower on his wife's gravestone, he looked up and said, I just wished I had picked a fresh flower for her every morning when she was alive. She really would have loved that. Don't miss it. And if you miss it, 
fix it. Some of you know this story. At the end of the summer before my sophomore year in college, my best friend from sixth grade invited me to go on vacation with her family. I had already committed to being a junior resident in a freshman dorm and had to show up for training. Really sadly, I said no to a week of sailing in a 60-foot sloop, but I knew there would be plenty more vacations. On a beautiful morning not long after they returned, my friend's handsome, fit father sprinted across a tennis court and suffered a fatal heart attack. The boat was sold. For more than 40 years now, some of my best choices have been informed by missing that sailing trip. When someone invites me to do something fabulous, I do my best to say yes. When my friend Benji returned from the Peace Corps, he said it best in a kind of throwaway question. I asked him what his most important lesson had been, and he didn't hesitate. Never say no to an invitation. Don't miss it. My point this morning is not for us to leave here wild, afraid of missing something, missing out, scrambling not to miss anything, but to pay attention to the openings, the possibilities right here before us and exert our agency not to just let our lives happen to us, but to open our minds and hearts and our arms a little or a lot and say yes. Beloved spiritual companions, it's a fierce lens to look through. I missed it. Oh, did I miss it. Let's be here now. If we're very, very lucky, we get the chance for a do-over. If you miss it, fix it. Or transform the miss into don't miss. Rilke said, and now let us believe in the new year that is given us. New, untouched, full of things that have never been. Amen. And I invite you to join hands for the benediction. From Rilke. And now let us believe in the new year. The new year that is given us new, untouched, full of things that have never been. Let us keep this faith, beloveds, and pass it on. The service begins when the service ends. Happy New Year. Bless your hearts. Amen. Please visit ASCBoston.org 
for more information about this historic Unitarian Universalist congregation. Arlington Street Church, gathered in love and service for justice and peace.